إنك لا تهدي من أحببت ولكن الله يهدي من يشاء Assalamu alaikum to Lies John Fontaine just before we begin the podcast please make sure you click subscribe and also set your notifications and make sure you check out the earlier podcasts We're up to around 40 podcasts so far there's lots of bon- podcasts there for you to benefit from make sure you check that out also if you can go to the John Fontaine YouTube channel as well click subscribe set your notifications and also enjoy the other videos there's a Thick of Love series, a series on Christianity, and other videos uh, regarding Dawa. Also, if you'd like to support the podcast by supporting us financially uh, with the equipment and the travel costs and the running costs, not just of the podcast, but also the other Dawa activities I'm involved in, please support on the Patreon account. Jazakallah khair. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen Wa Salaamu Alaikum Rasulillah Assalamu Alaikum Rasulillah Welcome to the Young Smokes Podcast We're here today with Amir Assalamu Alaikum Amir Wa Alaikum Wa Salaam Wa Rahmatullahi Wa Barakatuh Wa Salaam Wa Alhamdulillah Alhamdulillah Allah is most kind You know Mashallah. And he's the best of planets Because you know We've been trying to get this done for some time now, so you know, may Allah, you know, saying place Baraka in this and make it a benefit for us, you know, and whoever ears and hearts this may reach, inshallah. Amen, amen. Mashallah, you're looking fresh, looking, uh, alhamdulillah. <laughs> mashallah, it's good. Yeah, to I was just working out, you know, kind of have a Busy schedule trying to keep up with the youth out here. You know, the youth they ain't playing no games out here. <laughs> I'm guessing, you know? I'm guessing a, a lot's changed, you know, because you know, even even uh, me, I'm only 35, and I still don't I don't understand 25 year olds. So, you know, yeah. things things have changed so fast. Yeah, they have, but you know, for the most part, there's a lot of things that's going to always remain, mm-hmm. and that's Islam, alhamdulillah. So alhamdulillah. I say that to say, even the time that I was gone, you know, use utilizing, you know, the deen to facilitate your affairs, it never gets old. Mm-hmm. And I think a lot of the youth, you know what I'm saying, and plus with all of these distractions, you know, in, 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 in this, you know, Western culture, you know, people tend to resort to alternative methods of dealing with their affairs. But yeah. no matter what the situation is, if you utilize Islam, you know what I'm saying, and govern yourself by Islam, you'll be able to navigate through any affair. Now, as far as working out, you know what I'm saying, alhamdulillah, you know, there's some things that you you know you you implement in Islam as far as trying to you know lower your gaze and stuff like that. That's why I go to the gym extremely early, mm-hmm. so that you know it's empty. You know, because yeah, yeah, yeah. once the people come in, you know they have no hayat, they have no shyness. So it's like, other than that, with the working out, you gotta do that yourself. You know, so that's oh, where free will yeah. come in. <laughs> So subhanAllah, it's, it's, it's good to have you on, on the Young Smirks. You know, um, I, uh, I used to follow you before I was a Muslim. I was into your music and stuff like that. And then I, uh, I became a Muslim in 2008. Um, ah, alhamdulillah, it's the same year I became Muslim. Oh, subhanAllah, alhamdulillah. Yeah, so, I became but, Muslim in 2008. Yeah, yeah. So... So yeah, I mean, it's, it's nice to finally catch up. Um, I didn't want to go too much into your your story to Islam because I know you've covered it a lot, you know, in different programs like the Dean Show and things like that. Um, yeah. But just very, very briefly, um, what was the the main thing you can think of that that triggered you to think, yeah, this 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 religion is true? I mean, just always being a truth seeker. I think that, you know, coming out of the inner cities of America, you know, 
we're being fed a lot of, you know, lies, you know, we're constantly being, you know, victims of systemic racism, you know, constantly being ostracized and things like that. So, you know, being of African-American descent or African descent, you know, um, trying to find, you know, a place to belong or trying to find, you know, something that, you know, sustains, you know, your dignity and honor. Mm -hmm. I believe that we all search for that coming from these environments. So whether it be, you know, guys resorting to gangs or crews or groups or anything that can forge that, you know, that need to be, you know, validated, so to say. So I've always had that in my heart that I've always wanted to, you know, find truth. And I think that being in the music business for so many years and seeing, you know, all the evils, you know, saying that uh, constantly, you know, you know, establishing the music business, I believe my heart became more and more inclined to finding, you know, what was contrary to all of that. Mm. So I think the most beautiful part of, you know, Allah's guidance is that I wasn't actually targeting Islam. Mm. And I wasn't frequenting around Muslims. You know, I just, you know, in my own sincere and desperate heart, you know, was seeking something without even supplicating. It's just Allah knows your heart. Oh. And he guided me to Islam, you know. So with no prior, you know, involvement or any prior, you know, consultation. I literally was guided straight from, you know, Kufr and, you know, Shuriken, a, a lifestyle that's just, you know, consistent with fornication, you know, violence, drugs, whatever the case may be and was propelled directly into Islam. And I think the most beautiful thing, and this is something that many of the Salaf used to say, is that they didn't know if they were more grateful that they were guided to Islam or guided to the Sunnah. Um, so alhamdulillah, when Allah guided me to Islam, he guided me directly to the people of the Sunnah. Sure. So, you know, I, I, I didn't have to experience any deviation you know, or innovation. I just came straight, you know, amongst the people who were consistent in their, you know, adherence to Tawheed, you know, their adherence to the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu and the right, rightly got it, you know, saying Khulifa Rashidin and all the Ambia, you know, sure. this consistency was the only thing I've ever been exposed to. So, you know, Alhamdulillah, that was it. You know, it's just a beautiful thing to be pulled away from something that was so horrific and so evil and so, you know, fear seeming as far as the sins and things that perpetuate in that lifestyle to be brought to something completely opposite. So I embraced it with both hands, both legs, <laughs> all my teeth, <laughs> everything, Alhamdulillah. Yeah, it's fun a lot that reminds me of biting onto it with your molar teeth, you know, not letting go of it. And um, no, I, was, sorry. I was actually going to ask you that question, but you, you kind of answered it that, you know, I was wondering, how did you actually find the correct Islam? Because there are so many sects out there and, uh, you know, sometimes it can be confusing. You know, when somebody comes into Islam, you know, you got one person saying this, one person saying that. And sometimes it takes people a bit of time to find their, their feet with Islam. Yeah. But you yeah, were kind no, of no, straight in, you, you know, the people you met were well grounded in Islam and and you were just kind of blessed to be straight into that. No so, problem. yeah, I can only really attribute it to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because I would have I wouldn't have known, mm. you know, which group to embrace. So by Allah placing me amongst people who 
were extremely sincere. And they always brought proof and evidence to support every single claim. Mm -hmm. And the consistency of that was something that always resonated with me. Because you have a lot of, you know, callers to innovation, callers to their desires, you know, are very eloquent in their speech. And if you listen to them for about the first 30 minutes, you won't hear a single ayah or a single hadith. And I think that people who have this immense need to be, you know, have their hearts softened, softened or this need to be kind of nurtured in, in some kind of way or cultivated, they easily fall into the eloquent speech of individuals who just, you know, speak of things that are already known. Mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying so where's the lesson in that like you're telling me about something I already know so I can only share the emotion that comes with that thing but you haven't given me a remedy mm -hmm. that's the beauty about Islam you know the people of the Sunnah will always provide a remedy from legislation mm -hmm. from the Quran and the Sunnah you know what I'm saying because Allah hasn't produced a single you know saying disease or illness without a cure and this is the and this is the benefit of Islam, that whenever we face with any form of adversity, we can always refer back to Allah and his messenger and find that remedy. And that's what I found consistent amongst the people who Allah, you know, placed me in, you know, <coughs> their lives and in their presence. Yeah. And only later I started to learn that their ascription to the sunnah or their ascription to the seller for Sali or the you know pious predecessors, yeah. that this was the basis of how they understood the religion and how they acted upon it. Mm. So it's not like you know Sheikh Fulan Fulan or Sheikh Google Ibn Twitter or Instagram or nothing like that. It's like you're telling me about individuals who have a snag a chain mm. of even how they acquired their knowledge. Yeah. It goes back to some of the most, you know, world-renowned scholars of, you know, those, those, those of their time. So, you know, it's just a beautiful thing yeah, yeah. when you come from a place where you always fact-check. You know, in the streets, we got to check the facts. Like, you can't just tell us anything coming from the streets. One yeah. thing about being a kid Growing up in the streets, it's like, you can't just tell me anything. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I think that's something that helped me navigate through certain individuals who were trying to exploit, you know, my, my, my fame or try to exploit the fact that I was able to draw, you know, crowds of young people and so on and so forth. But I wouldn't contribute to those things or assist them in their call. Yeah. But when I you know, sat amongst the people of the Sunnah, it was more of me receiving benefit with no strings attached. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They don't push No one you. wanted anything. Yeah, no one, no one wanted anything you. in return. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You know, and coming from the business I was in, that was common, that people do something for you, they want something back. Mm -hmm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, all of these things, were just attributed to the radar system that I already had coming out the street. Mm -hmm. So when I found people who accommodated that mm -hmm. and then later learned like, okay, mashallah, I didn't understand. Now, I, now it makes sense. Mm -hmm. So you ascribe yourself to this book that Allah revealed, you know, saying to this messenger that he sent as the mercy of, to all mankind and those who follow him in totality in this. How did he lie? That makes sense. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, um, I wanted to ask is I used to be a, a jazz singer and uh, I was involved oh, okay. in, in the music industry. I used to sing with like, um, you know, some famous, well-known like Winter Marcellus and other, you know, famous jazz okay. guys. Um, and I used to also, I, I did a few, I did a song with a famous rapper in the UK. Um, but, but really, I'd, I'd reached the kind of, as far as I could go with music, I'd, I'd, I'd reached as far as I could go, if you know what I mean. Like, uh, the, I, I wasn't going to be, like, uh, bigger than I'd already got. But for someone like yourself, 
you reached a very high level of fame and fortune. And it's, it's a huge test, you know, to come to Islam and then have to, and then you was kind of at the top of your game at that time in that particular industry, you know, but how did you just kind of let go of that so easily? And, and other people, they will be thinking, how can someone do that? You know, people who are born into Islam, sometimes they're chasing these, these kind of dreams. And then they see someone like you just, it doesn't mean anything to you. You just let it all go. Well, there's an ayah in the Quran where Allah commands us to enter Islam completely. You know, hmm. to enter Islam completely. And what we understand with Iman, what belief is, is, you know, statement of the tongue, action of the limbs, you know, pure intention of the heart, you know, statement of the tongue, action of the limbs. So this is what completes, you know, the Iman. It's not just a statement of the tongue that's not in the heart. You know, it's just not, it's not a pure intention with no statement and no action. You know, it's not an action without, you know, so on and so forth. So the reality of it is, for me to be completely immersed in a lifestyle that's contrary to Islam. And then, like I said, searching for its exact opposite. When I found that, that's what I was looking for. You know what I'm saying? So there's no need for me to straddle. There's no need for me to play. This is what I was looking for. You know, now some people come into Islam and still have some doubts and uncertainties, you know. And these are the things that the shaitan, you know, tries to exploit or take advantage when someone comes into the religion weak or not completely embrace, you know what I'm saying, Islam in, in its totality alongside its simplicity, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Because they still have some love or attachment to the dunya. Yeah. So for me, like you said, I believe that the long period of time of being in that state of, you know, fame, like you said, you know, success or whatever the case may be, it enabled me to understand it in totality, you know what I'm saying? The only thing really was left was to just make more money. Mm. But as far as all the accolades that come with it, I've experienced all those things. You know oh. what I'm saying? From, you know, fornication, you know, dr drugs, you know, whatever, all the things that come with it, I've experienced them so much that I can acquire, you know what I'm saying, sort of a numbness, you know what I'm saying? But for someone who's new to that, it may take them some time, you know what I'm saying, to get over it, so to say, you know? Because yeah. if you just yeah. tasted it, it's like, you know, you got to, you know, you got to have a, <laughs> a few more hearty meals before you ready to, you know, let yeah. that go. It's but funny. for me, I was at that point where I understood that all of that wasn't going to amount to anything other than coming to some kind of abrupt halt and then I have to find my place all over again. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I would have to find my place in life all over again. Because mm. now this purpose is going to expire. And then what am I going to do next? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a very troubling you know, way to feel. Yeah. It's to know that the life expectancy rate in the music business is you're as good as your last song. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's like yeah, it's good it's, the last song. even like the people that you was with at the time, these days, they hardly even known now. And it's only what, 10 yeah. years on. They're not even known anymore. It's such a short lived kind of dream, right? Exactly. And like when you can actually not foresee that, but you have some foresight, you know, you understand that, you know, this is like a lottery. Yeah. You know? Everyone's gambling every day to remain relevant in the game that's fleeing from mm -hmm. just like this life of this world. Yeah, it's yeah. fleeing from you. It's so that game is the same way. It's fleeing from you. Mm -hmm. 
the, you know what I'm saying? The audience is waiting for you to make one whack record or do one thing that contradicts your character or whatever you say you were or whatever you ascribe yourself to be. One flaw, one crack in your armor, and they turn on you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So you that's know. why you see people go to extremes to maintain the attention of that audience. They'll paint their hair yellow. They'll do something, anything. Yeah, yeah. Anything. So at that point, you you, you know that that's a certain form of slavery. Mm. You've enslaved yourself, you know what I'm saying, to acquire the attention of people mm. who have an attention span of a goldfish. Yeah. You know, and that's, 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 yeah, that's crazy, you know? So that's really what was bothering me is that I knew that at some point, man, I'm going to get older. You know, this is, is a lot of stuff that's just going to factor into like, mm. what's the next move? Yeah. Yeah. You know, uh, so when I found it, yeah, got it. You know, uh, something I've never really said on camera, not many, not many people would know, but as I was coming into Islam, I had a court case going on and it was looking like, I was looking at possibly 10 years in prison. Not many people know that. And, and I just, alhamdulillah, you know, when, when I was in the court, I said to Allah, if you get me out of this, I will work for you, right? And alhamdulillah, after, after a two year court case, it got canceled, alhamdulillah. And, and as, as I said, I accepted Islam in 2008. You know, this is a similar time to when you accepted Islam. But you was actually tested with that test of actually going to prison for a long time. You know, right. something that maybe you don't need to get into the details, but something that maybe from your past life or whatever it may be. But the ultimate thing is you were tested with that huge test. So I wanted to know a bit about how that how Islam played a part in, in you being in prison and how was the Dawah also in prison? Well, leading up to my incarceration, I always felt like something was going to happen. To me. I didn't know what, because I felt like I was breaking so much ground. I was reaching so many people. And this is what prompted me to want to move out to Egypt and try to study because I knew I couldn't spend, you know, five, 10 years keep talking about bad boy and what I used yeah, to yeah. do. I didn't want to be that kind of speaker because the thing is, when you have the youth inclined to listen to you, but they may not listen to the Mashiach. Mm -hmm. They may not listen to the early man because they think, okay, these guys are 80 years old. They ain't never smoked weed. They don't really know. The sheikh ain't never been in the club and so on and so forth. And these are all facts. But the reality of it is he knows the book of Allah. He knows the son of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So he doesn't have to go to the club to understand what's haram and what's halal. He doesn't have to smoke weed to know that this is khamr and so on and so forth. So the youth have this very tainted understanding of who they choose to gravitate to. Mm. So you find people like myself, like Muta, you know what I'm saying, and some of the other influential Muslims, may Allah guide us all, you know, who, you know, inspire the youth. Mm. I understood that to come with a responsibility. You know what I'm saying? It's not to have the youth fascinated with me and I thrive off of that. Yeah. Because once again, I already experienced that. And they come to Islam to have a fan club. You know what I'm saying? I came to Islam to learn who's my Lord. You know what I'm saying? Learn about the messages that he sent and learn about the religion that he prescribed. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? These are my intentions. And to embrace this newfound brotherhood that can never be forged no other way. Mm. Not through gangs, not through ethnicity, not through anything else, oh, not through tribalism. It can't happen. So these were my intentions. So now that I've learned that Allah is using me to unite the hearts of the people and bring, you know, this newfound awareness to Islam, 
I didn't want that to just weather away after a couple of years of still talking about bad boy yeah, or yeah. coming to Islam and so on and so forth. So I went to study. And as I was getting closer, like literally just getting the knot off my tongue, you know what I'm saying? Mm. You know what I'm saying? As far as speaking Arabic, you know, I was learning the Arabic language. I went to uh, Marrakesh al Fajr first, then I went to uh, Marrakesh al Ibana, then I had just signed up for the Rasul Khas and um, uh, Al Azhar University. I was going to take my whole elementary school education over in Arabic. Oh. You know what I'm saying? This is the Rasul Khas. Like, so I'm not actually going to the Jamia. I'm actually going to, you know what I'm saying, you know, uh, uh, um, my scholastic career. I'm going through all of that all over again in Arabic. So this would increase my vocabulary. This would increase my understanding of things that I already knew, so on and so forth. So this is my plan. So alhamdulillah, Allah is the best of plan. It's, it just led me to, you know, the last moments traveling. I had just made Hajj. So Allah invited me to his house. Just made Hajj. Came back to Egypt to drop off the things I bought for my family. Jumped back on the plane to go to Belgium. And I'm literally just getting back. Um. So when I got in, arrested, and like I said, I felt like something was going to happen to me. I just didn't know what. But when that happened, I wasn't shocked. Mm -hmm. So all the details leading up to it didn't really matter because it was an old case that was before I was Muslim and those details didn't matter. Allah had already forgiven me for my past. So I can't sit mm -hmm. here and, and wallow in, you know what I'm saying, sorrow and grief about Allah placing a trial on me, you know what I'm saying, that from the outside looking in looks like something, you know, that may be you know, haram or might be, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, something that was caught up to me and all of these different, you know, yeah, terms yeah. that people make. I knew that this was what Allah was, like, this is what Allah was preparing for me. Yeah. So I used to just, so to ask the second part of your question, I used to just ask Allah every day to continue to purify my intentions and make me a benefit for the people make me a benefit for the people. So now, being a practicing Muslim in the streets, in the world, right? Being able to sit in some structured environments amongst people who, you know, people of knowledge, mm -hmm. and then to go to prison. This is what Allah was answering my dua. Because yeah, yeah. now I can benefit these people. Like in here, I may actually be a, 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 a senior student of knowledge. Yeah, 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 yeah. But in the world, I was a you know talib daif. I was a weak yeah. student. Yeah. You know, but to actually come into prison, but people have embraced Islam sincerely, but they kind of coupled it with the prison culture. Yeah, yeah. And me, I'm coming in. I'm not even. I'm a I'm not I'm opposed to prison culture. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The same Muslim I was when I'm out there, the same Muslim I'm gonna be in here. And that's what transpired, and that's what people knew me for the whole time I was incarcerated. Is that you know I love Islam. You know what I'm saying? So I was able to benefit the people with what I learned. You know, they seen how steadfast I was and avoiding the things that Allah forbid. So like every year they would have Christmas dinner. I just leave, I just share this one thing with you. Every year they would have Christmas dinner. And I would sit in the block, you know what I'm saying, in my um, prison block or dorm or whatever, by myself. Everybody go out, including some of the Muslims, may Allah forgive me. So the police, every year, no matter what prison I went to, say, yo, they like, you know, yo, you ain't gonna go eat? They call all of us out. Yeah, yeah. Ah, you ain't gonna go eat. Like, nah, that food is for y'all, man. He's like, Yo, what you mean? I, said, man, I don't celebrate no Christmas, man. They start telling me, Yo, they got cranberry sauce. They start telling you all of this stuff that they don't give you normally. 
yeah. So they kind of like, you know, beef up the meal for the holidays. Mm-hmm. And he's trying to tell me all this. Like, this is going to convince me to disobey Allah, right? So I would always tell him, like, listen, if I can turn down 30 meals during the month of Ramadan, and y'all know the Muslims, we fast. If I could turn down 30 meals, a whole month of eating for the, you know, for, for the sake of Allah, one meal ain't nothing. And then all of the kufar, they would be like, yo, I, I know you don't celebrate Christmas, but like, yo, could I get your tray? Like, nah, can't get my tray. <laughs> what you mean? Say, yo, listen, if I accept the tray, then that means I'm participating in, you know, this, 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 this religious, you know, uh, uh, holiday. Yeah. All right, well, yo, can you just sit it down and I come get it? And they, I mean, they would come with all <laughs> kinds of stuff. I'd be like, look, look, nah, man. Matter of fact, I ain't even going in the kitchen. So, you know, this was, the, this is what people knew me for. And this is where the Muslims, you know, around me understood that I wasn't playing when it came to Islam. I'm funny. I could joke with you all day. I could do all of that. But when it comes to Islam, I'm not playing. You know what I'm saying? And that's the balance that we all should have. You know, sometimes, you know, you have some brothers who are, you know, excessive in their harshness and their firm stance to where, you know, they make the things that's permissible for us mm. appear to be haram mm. or, 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 or makroor. You know what I'm saying? Or so on and so forth. But the reality of it is, man, we all got our own different character. You know, we all got a different character. We all striving, you know what I'm saying, to follow the exemplary character of, of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And none of us is going to make it. Mm. Not near one of us, the most righteous of us today, would never come remotely close, you know what I'm saying, to the character of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the companions. Mm-hmm. But that's not discouraging. You know what I'm saying? That's not a bad thing. Yeah. That just means you're going to always have something to strive for. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Until you meet Allah, you're going to always have something to do. Oh. Muslim can't say he's bored. How could you say you're bored? When you got a, a, a day to be better. You know oh. what I'm saying? Yeah. You know? How was your, um, how, how, was he, how was he meeting like some of the old friends from back in the day, since you came out, I seen that you met some of your, some of like P Diddy and others. How was it meeting them after such a long time, and how were they? How did they take it of you becoming Muslim? Well, the thing is, you know, however they took it, is not really my concern. Mm-hmm. But I understand the question. Because, I mean, you know, people know me to be, you know, frequent with these people. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, you know, relationships with these people, business related or whatever the case may be. But I think a lot of them seen before I came home from prison that something had changed. Mm-hmm. But then to come home from prison and see that, hey, I'm still the same guy that you mm-hmm. saw before I went to prison. Still ain't thinking about no music. Still ain't going to no clubs, no parties, ain't doing none of that. Still ain't smoking, ain't drinking. So nothing's changed. Mm. And I think that a lot of those people, because, you know, a lot of people have rough patches in their life, right? Mm. And they try to find some alternative to get around that. Yeah. You know, and then your peers, they kind of, you know, uh, he ain't serious. He's a Buddhist now. He saying he don't eat cows and he don't do this and he don't do that. And you give it like a couple months in a year, then he backslides. So those people kind of anticipate that. And the law mentions this about you know the people of you know people of the book, mm. you know, what I'm saying and taking them as you know holy and so on and so forth. Yeah. So all they want to do is corruption. Yeah. And this is true. This is yeah. from a law. You know what I'm saying? So I guess expecting that, but being so firm and consistent and content, I believe these guys just gave up. Like, so, you know, now it's like, we have to learn how to embrace a man. 
yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying? So that's really the turning point. So to answer your question, however they felt, like I said before, it didn't really matter because I kind of blocked those things out. Yeah, yeah. But to see now, fast forward, you know what I'm saying, 13 years later, I've been Muslim. Mashallah. Nothing's changed. So now I was like, you know what? I got to get over this whole loon thing. I got to learn how to get acquainted with a man. And yeah. I see that, you know, maybe some pieces of loon is there. It's not a bad thing, you know. My name is not associated with shirt. No one is associated with, you know what I'm saying? But alhamdulillah, I'm a mir. You know mm. what I'm saying? And I would rather you get more acquainted with a mir because there's a turning point that is so valid and so beneficial Yeah, yeah. with me being a mir opposed to you trying to talk about old stuff in a new day. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. So, you know, just before you leave us, I just wanted to speak a little bit about your projects that you have going on because um, I've seen you, you've got a few things going on. You've got paid meals. I've seen this halal drip and uh, you're, you've got yeah. your brand as well. So I wanted to yeah. touch upon that before you leave, inshallah. Alhamdulillah. I've been so busy, man. Alhamdulillah, Rabbul Alameen. Like Allah is so kind, you know what I'm saying? So merciful. And he's enabled me to accomplish so much in just a year. Mashallah. You know, I've, you know, I've got a book deal with Simon and Schuster. You know what I'm saying? So I'm gonna be releasing the book, you know, the top of next year. Inshallah. You know, so just we have to put this whole story behind me. So like everybody can just read the book. You don't have to ask anymore, you know. So I mean following that, all my interviews is just be current events. I got a six-part doc series I'm, I'm shooting with um, Unrealistic Ideas, which is um, Mark Wahlberg's um, um, production company. So we partnered up to do my six-part doc series on my whole life, from beginning to now. So once again, you won't have to ask me no more. You know what I'm saying? You're going to get it all. You're going to get everything from childhood, music, business, Islam, prison, the entrepreneur, so on and so forth. Paid Mills is a tech company. And we're building a 2.0 version of Paid Mills right now, which is a pay it forward app that's going to impact hunger in an extremely major way. But what I've been doing is manually implementing the system by, you know, receiving money from contributors, hiring private chefs to cook the meals, Sure. actually go allocate the meals to poor people and whether in shelters, halfway houses, whatever the case may be, uh, you know, rehabilitation centers, domestic violence centers, and just out and about in the streets. Sure. Uh, to World West, that's my other tech company, which we actually provide the service of technology, preferably for, you know, minorities who can't really afford the cost, you know, of paying for technology based on the Western market. So we try to help entrepreneurs to get quality technology that competes with, you know, the technology that's out there, you know, with, for people who are more fortunate, you know, mm -hmm. financially, so on and so forth. Uh, for loose, is a clover line I'm coming up with. You know what I'm saying? This should be out with you know, around the fall, winter time. Now, for loose, you know, in Arabic, everybody knows it means wealth. And basically, is a is a line that is inspired by Islam, but definitely is going to draw the attention of Muslims and non-Muslims alike. Because I know there's a lot of young people out here who's not really inclined to win a soul or the eaves are, you yeah. know what I'm saying? But if I can create a line that's appealing, but still covers the aura. Yeah, so if yeah. you're in the master and you're going to make who call, you know, your cake thing out, you know, alhamdulillah, I did my job. You know what I'm saying? And you're still fresh and fly. There's nothing yeah, yeah, yeah. in the sunnah that says we can't be fly and we can't be, you know, you know, appealing in our, you know, you know, in our attire. Now the halal drip shop, that's actually going to be a, 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 a mobile application and a web-based application where I'll be able to, you know what I'm saying, um, 
consolidate, you know, or basically, you know, saying all of the uh, Muslim vendors and put them in one place. You know what I'm saying? So you don't have to shop all over the place looking for Muslim, you know what I'm saying, clothing, Muslim mm -hmm. fragrances, so on and so forth. So the Halal Drip Shop is going to become that one-stop shop for all Muslim fragrances, tires, so on and so forth. So I'll even be able to showcase my own, you know what I'm saying, uh, um, merchandise as well. But it's just to give the Muslims an opportunity. So on the Halal Drip um, shop page on Instagram. The the intention was to, you know, create this newfound attachment to your Islamic identity. Yeah, yeah. So I show this whole array of diversity all around the world. All the young Muslims all around the world dressed in whether they wear izars, whether they wear thobes. You know, the the, the, the brothers in, in Bangladesh wearing their lungis and so on and so forth. So I was like. People don't know that every Muslim country has their own cultural, traditional, you know, attire. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? So when a lot of the young people get shunned or claims are made against them that they're imitating the Kufa, mm -hmm. but we live in the West. You know what I'm saying? So we live in the West. So with that being said, there's going to be a certain type of style that comes with even a Muslim who chooses to wear a throw, he might wear a throw mm -hmm. with a traveling bag, yeah, you know what yeah, I'm yeah. saying, with some brand new jade. But I'm still wearing a throw. I'm not imitating the kufa. You know what I'm saying? So all of these type of claims is what actually pushed a lot of the youth away from wanting to identify with their Islam. So the Halal Trip Shop, you know, started a movement and alhamdulillah is going beautifully and I asked that everybody mm -hmm. continuously you know, continue to like keep the wave going. I ask that people continue to contribute to paid meals because you know every contribution is made. You see me out there. I'm physically making sure these people eat that food. So your yeah, money is not going to you no know, scam or yeah, no yeah. con artists giving you videos of kids suffering and so on and so forth. And you send your money and it never reached them. Yeah, yeah. Any dollar you give me is an amount. You know, and Islam is a trust. You know what I'm saying? I don't make no money. You know, whatever I make aside of paid bills, you know what I'm saying? Whatever goes into the paid bills bank account, I take that money and I spend it on food and I go out and I make sure that these people are being fed. So every weekend, I feed, you know, shelters and places in Atlanta. I got volunteers in other states to do the same thing. I got the paid meals pantry. I give away food every day in New York. You know what I'm saying? And I partner, you know, with a lot of, um, you know, food vendors and so on and so forth. So right now you can actually go on the landing page yeah. if you're a food vendor and register the paid meal. So once the app goes live, you could be a registered vendor, you know, whether you're a grocery store, restaurant, food truck, food cart, or certified private chef. All of these fall under the category of food Mashallah. vendor. Yeah, and we'll be able to, you know, feed an abundance of people through this system. MashaAllah. We're, yeah. we're going to put all the links in the subscription so people can check them things out. Yes. You can see what's going on. But it's great, MashaAllah. Yeah. You know, you, you're on the ground, you know, doing, doing it, alhamdulillah. You yeah, know, I mean, mashallah. the thing is, we got to go meet a lot, you know. And how we choose to meet them is, is all on us. Mm. You can't blame the shape. You can't blame this one. You can't blame that one. You know, you have a duty. You have a right to fulfill. Yeah. You know? And Allah promised us if we fulfill his right by worshiping him and him alone and not associating the partners, you know what I'm saying? Then the law has granted us, you know what I'm saying, paradise. Yeah. But the party that don't stop. You no, know? I want to go to the party that don't stop. <laughs> you know, I've, I've been to all other parties. I want to go to the one that don't stop. Yeah, yeah so you know I'm saying? and I'm serious about that. So, like, yeah, I'm gonna fall short. You know, I'm not free from sin. I'm not free from shortcomings. But the reality of it is, I try to conceal my shortcomings and conceal my sins and work on the things that are pleasing and praiseworthy. Yeah, and we all should do that. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Do you, do you, when we do that. Yeah. Do you, yeah, do you have when any... we do that, we only empower 
ourselves. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We raise the flag of Islam, the banner of Islam. Yeah. Alhamdulillah, Allah grant us the support, the aid, and the victory that we want. And we so desperately desire it will come from our own hands and what we put forth. Yeah, yeah. So, catch up with you and um you know i'm really really happy to catch up with you and um, hear about the work that you're doing you know the the thing we can take from this is as muslims we have to be active we have to be doing something for allah you know yeah no no matter how small we think it may be you know at the end of the day we're doing it for ourselves you know we're doing it for our own our own hereafter um yeah Exactly, because we can't just sit around and, and hope for Allah's mercy. Yeah, you can't do that. You know, you can't assume that because your name Muhammad or your Abdurrahman that you're going to paradise. Yeah, yes. Yeah, you know, we have to be working. We're supposed to be the busiest people on the planet. Yeah, the busiest. Like when people think of a Muslim, they think, "Oh man, them people right there, yeah. they put in that work." Yeah. They don't waste no time. They got three jobs, you know what I'm saying? Mm. Six kids and working. Like, you know, the kids is working. And, you know, they, we all have to, like you said, contribute to our akhara. You know, you want to live, you know, for an eternity in a state of bliss? Mm. It ain't cheap. Mm. You got to work for it. You got to work for it, you know? Mm. So... I say this as a reminder to myself and a reminder to the Muslims, you know, work. Put in that work, but make sure it's praiseworthy and make sure that it's an accepted deed, meaning it has to be solely for the sake of Allah and it has to be according to the Sunnah of the Prophet. No deed is being accepted if these two things are not working simultaneously. Yeah. Solely for the sake of Allah and according to the Sunnah of the Prophet. Mm-hmm. Can't have one without the other. Just, just before we go, can I just ask you, just for because I have a lot of non-Muslims also tuning in, and um, could you just give them a, a, a small reminder of what it takes to be a Muslim? You know what 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 is needed for somebody to come into the fold of Islam? What it takes is knowledge and understanding that your Creator created you with a purpose. And that purpose is to worship him and him alone. So we're not created and left to our own whims and our own desires. We do not create our destiny. We're not in control of our futures. You know what I'm saying? We're put here as servants, whether we choose to serve or not. You know, our free will is limited. You know what I'm saying? Allah is the facilitator of all of our affairs. So this creator, who is the creator, the facilitator, the arranger of all the affairs of creation, if he and he alone is the only one that possesses the ability to do these things, then it's he and he alone who should be worshipped. It's that simple. That is your purpose. Once you acquire an understanding of that purpose, everything else would just fall into place easily. It's that simple. You can't build a house from the roof. You have to have a foundation. And the foundation is this land. And you build upon it until you meet your creator. And when you meet him, he will look at the deeds, the effort, you know what I'm saying, time, wealth, everything that you've invested in building from that foundation, and he will, award, he will reward you accordingly. He will reward you accordingly. Mm-hmm. So if you're seeking any reward in this life, it has to be done for the sake of the one who created you, for the sake of the one who created the heavens and the earth and everything in between. And it has to be in accordance to the methodology of the messenger that he sent to all mankind. So this is very simple. I didn't sound too long. 
It's not all that drawn out. It's very, very simple. Islam is extremely simple. That's why the Muslims, we know we are a work in progress. This is why we, you know, we, 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 we're very, you know, compassionate towards one another. You know what I'm saying? We're very considerable of the fact that we're all deficient, created deficient. We're going to fall short. And that's not discouraging. Mm-hmm. But as long as you know and you're on the correct path, that's all that matters. Yeah. You know, that's all that matters. So I pray that Allah guide all of you and rectify your affairs I mean, and guide you to the truth. You know what I'm saying? Because Islam is the truth. Yeah. This blessed deen, the submission is true. It's the only way to govern yourself in this life. Right. In according to what your Lord prescribed for you because he knows you better than you know yourself. He knows you better than you think you know yourself. He knows you better than other people think they know about you. You know, it's just, you know, is that simple? Yeah. So alhamdulillah. You know, you, know. Like, you know, the people, they know. They can read our faces, you know. They know we believe yeah. this religion. This is not just for fun. You know, nah. what, what we're gaining really in this life, nothing. Look at what nah. you've given up, you know. And look at your face. Look at the happiness, the no, the light, you know, the, 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 the sincerity. You know, you can tell that you, you, you believe in this thing. You know? Yeah, and it took, and, it, and I couldn't get this from that life I led before. I was miserable. You understand? Everybody wanted what I had, but they didn't want to take the misery. You got to oh, take man. that too. You don't get to just take the car, the house, the money, the girls, the, the, the alcohol. You got to take the misery too. So if you don't want the misery, then you leave it all alone. Yeah, yeah. This is why I don't play with that stuff. I ain't listening to music in 13 years. This is why I don't play with it. Because you put one little toe in the water, you're going to end up going swimming. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? If the you water feels nice. I yeah, wanted to, put that one, huh? yeah, I wanted to speak to you about this because, you know, a lot of people, especially because we've been involved in music before, people are like, why don't you make halal music, this, that? Nah, I ain't no with, halal music. I know. This is what I'm saying. Is, and even, even just vocals, I don't want anything to do with anything like it. You know, it's, yeah, but look at look at listen to what you just said. Listen to the trick of the shape on. Yeah. We know music is haram. Why not make halal music? How could you attach the word halal to haram? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And think that you're making it halal. Yeah. Right? If music represents haram, yeah. How do you make halal haram? You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. This is the trick of the shape on to make you believe that you can take something from something prohibited. Yeah, something detested by Allah and turning it into something good. Yeah. yeah. And this is why I say I'm so grateful that Allah didn't place me around these people when I came into Islam. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. You know what I'm saying? Because I'd be like some of these individuals, who I care not to say their names, who started off, you know, as Muslims and now they're back on tour with their good talk. You know what I'm saying? Because they was around these people yeah, yeah. who chasing their desires constantly pushing in this man's face, you know, that there is a gap or there's a small window, you know, where you can you can just squeeze it in. Trust yeah. me, it's all that. It's it's stuff for the law of being. Next thing you know, you know, you're back on the road. It's Cat Stevens. Yeah. You know, a... you're not even Yusuf Islam anymore. Yeah. May Allah guide him back to the truth. I mean, I mean. You know, so, you know, it's like, I mean, a lot of protectors are here. It's a, it's a lot going on out there, but I just really found so much comfort amongst the brothers that I'm with every day. I'm around Muslims that remind me of a lot. And I said that, I left, I posted something like that from a talk that I did a long time ago. Just mm-hmm. surround yourself with people who feel love. That's how you save yourself. You can't be around people that don't feel love. Yeah, yeah. You got to be around people that feel lost. Because even if you get caught slipping, you're going to look at your brother and he's going to be looking at you like, Yeah, yeah. Come on. So, you want to tighten up. Yeah. But if you're around, you got a whole chilling section of people who on her arm. You understand? Once again, like some of these individuals that's out there still in the music business, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? Still trying to justify it by shooting a few 
things out there that's related to the religion, but in all actuality, your whole call, your whole activity, everything that you ascribe yourself to. You got guys out there rapping, claiming gangs and Islam all in the same breath. Doesn't make any sense. You know what I'm saying? You got to pick one. Because if you don't know which out of those three is the winning team, then you're definitely bound to be a loser. Subhanallah. If you don't know Islam itself is the winning team, how could you ascribe yourself to a gang and uh, immerse yourself in haram and think you won't win? Subhanallah. You know? So, yeah, I don't want to, you know, get too winded, but I really appreciate you inviting me, you know, to give uh, me this talk. You know, I've been yeah. really trying to, you know, connect with you. It's been kind of rough because I've been busy. Yeah. And I haven't really been doing no talks. I actually been turning down a lot of things because I want to get a lot of my business and stuff in order first. Because anything I do, I want to be consistent. Yeah, so yeah. I don't want to start giving talks, doing things that's going to take me away from providing for my family because they got rights. And, and they've been without me for nine years. You know what I'm saying? Um, so I have my family got rights. So they come they come at first after Alana's messenger. Yeah, yeah. You know, the longest messenger come my family, you know, and then I can mingle amongst the people again, inshallah. I mean, but I keep thanks for your time, and I love you for the sake of Allah. And uh, man, you know, may the one who stake you love me for love you. I mean, I mean, and uh, we, we make dua for you. We ask everyone who's listening to remember you and your projects in their dua. And we, we ask Allah to, you know, accept your projects from you and your work from you and uh, grant success through them. Um, nah, barakallah. Jazakallah. Nah, uh, I hope to see you in person soon, inshallah. Inshallah, inshallah. I might have some good news. I'll make an announcement pretty soon, but I'm working on something that, inshallah. that might enable me to start moving around again, inshallah. Inshallah. Okay. Nah. Salaam alaikum. Salaam alaikum. إنك لا تهدي من أحببت ولكن الله يهدي من يشاء